Hey, and welcome to the station on Flipgrid. I've got to tell you, this is probably my favorite station because Flipgrid is the most foundational tool in my classroom. And that's because it allows me to get inside kids' brains and know when they know something and know when they don't. I also, because I'm teaching remotely, I've never met my kids face to face, but Flipgrid gives me an ability to see their personality shine, to get to see what kind of learners they are and have them explain to me their learning journey. It just simply has become my favorite tool. And I have 40 kids per class and five classes, so I've got a lot of kids and that's a lot of videos. And I still find tremendous value in this tool. It's a tool that allows students to critically think about the content. As they have to answer something, they have to stop, interact with the information, think about it more critically, and then compose an answer that shows their learning. As a teacher, I get to see where they might have gaps in their learning, where they might have already surpassed what I'm thinking they need to know. And it really is this rich information source for me as the teacher to understand my learners. I love this tool, I use it all the time, so I'm super excited to show you as much as I can in this small learning station. So come, let's take a look. Okay, now it's time to get to know Flipgrid. Here's an actual student example. And if you've seen this before, don't worry, we're going to break this down a bit further. So I'm going to press play and we'll break it down when it's over. This is my manifesto. One thing I'm proud of is how it came out. Like, I really like the quotes that I put on there because they really speak to me. Like, stop worrying so much. I need to always remember these things. And then something I change is like, I use a lot of fonts, I feel like it's very busy. Next time I'd stick to like five main fonts. And then three things I learned are when you create a manifesto, you should use a simple background. I just did ocean waves, so the background doesn't really interfere with the quotes. And then I also learned how to curate lines, like quotes, and just organize it before they're put on the manifesto. Then the last thing I And remember, this is my favorite part. I learned is the power of words. I always knew words are meaningful, but these quotes, like I said before, really speak to me, and yeah. So, the power of this is in her getting to reflect on her learning experience. But this was the first time that my students had used Flipgrid for the... this. But this was the first time my students had used Flipgrid, so I had to give them prompts. My goal in using Flipgrid is for them to be able to reflect and talk about their learning on their own without my needed prompts. But with this particular video, I would go back in and give her tips. Maybe I might recommend her use of the word like, that she might want to look at that as she continues to leave responses on Flipgrid. I might ask her and prompt her to give me more detail and to think more deeply about some of the connection she's making. But in this first Flipgrid is where she's just answering prompts. It now becomes my responsibility as the teacher to help guide her into more deeper, meaningful responses. So let's head to Flipgrid and see how students leave these responses. So once you sign up for Flipgrid, you'll get to something that looks like this. And this is your Flipgrid dashboard. You can see I have a bunch of different groups and topics because I've been using Flipgrid for a very long time. Flipgrid is divided into topics, which is what topic am I going to ask you about? In that one, it was about manifestos, and I can add those topics to groups. So you can see here I have an Anne Frank learning grid because we had a learning station grid for Anne Frank. And when kids responded, they went to their periods grid and left responses. You can see I have a ton of responses here, but I don't have that many for period four, so I might want to investigate why that is true. But here's how I make a topic. So I'm gonna head over to topics. I'm gonna come over to add a topic. Remember, this is just a prompt is what it really is. And so I'm going to title this one practice just because we're practicing here. And here is where I would add 
my prompt. So whatever your question might be that you want the students to answer. I can also add some media to give the prompt a little bit more meaning or to showcase something. And so I can record a video of me talking about something. I can upload a video that I've made, maybe even one that I've made on YouTube or that I found on YouTube and the kids respond to that. I can upload an image or a Jiffy, add an emoji, or I can work with some of these other apps that are listed down here. Once I've added my title and my prompt and decided whether or not I'm going to have a media, I almost always add jiffies to make it fun. Uh, in this one, I'll just add one about thinking. And then I add the jiffy just to make it a little more fun when they look at it. Then I can invite them by their student email. Here, I'm going to put my school email. And that means that any student who has this email domain can get to this topic. I can also share it to my Google Classroom, which we're going to do in a second. I can also come down to these essentials. I can moderate the topic, which means I'll watch the video and okay it before it goes on the grid. I can decide on the recording length. And for me, because I have so many students coming to me for so many periods, I usually keep it at about 30 seconds. And um, I can add whether or not they can leave video or text comments or just maybe text comments only, however I want to do that. So I create the topic. And now you can see I have the opportunity to share it to Google Classroom. I click this, it goes to my Google Classroom. It's actually gonna take me to my personal one. I choose a class and then I can choose if I wanna do an assignment, a question, an announcement, or make it material. And because you're probably very familiar with Google Classroom, I won't go into the next steps of that. But that's how easy it is for me to share that topic straight to Google Classroom. Now that I've made a topic, I might want to add it to a group. And I can do that by clicking here under Actions, and I can add it to a group. It will show me all of the groups that I have, and I can add it to one of these if I wanted. Because these are actual student ones, I'm not going to play around with that. But let's see what it looks like when they go to record a response. So I'm going to pretend I'm going to record a response. And now that I'm here, let's take a look at these four things that can be done. I can use these options, which are really kind of advanced for screen, recording your screen and muting and bringing in other videos and mirroring your video. You can use that as needed. You can record, which is the record button, but it's the effects that are the best. I can filter. Now, when I filter, I could even go to something like this Lego one. So if I'm a student who doesn't want to leave a response and high school students are the ones who will hem and haw about responses because they're worried about what they look like, they could just use this. But it's important to have them talking about their learning. Um, I could also just use black and white, which I really like because black and white seems to take any kind of blemishes off. And I can also come over and head to the frames and I could do a breaking news, which is kind of cool. Breaking news. The 13 colonies have just decided whatever you're learning about. And there are all kinds of different frames that I can use. This is kind of cool. Gives it that filter like an Instagram. Or I can come back and I can come over to the whiteboard. I can choose the whiteboard. I can split the image, which you see I'm here, but there's also a whiteboard. <laughs> and I can make that smaller. And on the whiteboard, I can do this. I can come over to draw and I can use this to answer a math problem. I'm using a really simple math problem right here, but as I record, it can show me doing that math problem. So two plus two equals, oops, need to get to my drawing, equals four. And when I'm done, I go to this green next button. So it shows it to me, and then I can submit it. And when it gets submitted, it's gonna have me narrating my thinking around solving a math problem, which is pretty cool. Okay, now it's your turn. Magically, I've just made a topic for you to answer. So you're gonna return back to the site, find the part where it says answer this question, click on it, and use your email to sign in. 
Once you're in the Flipgrid, you're going to be asked to do these things as part of your response. And you're gonna play around again with, I want you to have at least two things from here to show us that you are playing around with these tools. Here's a really great one for students and what my students did with manifestos is you can just bring, and I'm just gonna put my screen down a little bit so I can just drop in. I'm gonna drop in, sorry y'all, but I picture my dog because it just happens to be there. <laughs> and now I could put this here like my student did with the manifesto and I could talk about this object or picture that I've added to the screen. I might even be explaining the respiratory system. I might be talking about constitutional law, a visual graphic of it. So you're going to record right now a message to your first year teacher self, which might be really interesting considering that you probably had no idea you would be teaching in a pandemic. <laughs> so um, good luck with that. And when you're done, Go sign up for Flipgrid and see if you can make your first topic. After you've left a video response, made your first topic, head back to the site to answer the Padlet question. Thanks.